Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Smartphone Ink from Cosmodrome Games. Alright, so it's a little bit squished in the camera, but it actually all fits. This is a solo setup for Smartphone Ink, and there's actually another board that's a bit bigger that can play up to five people, but I just use the smaller board because it's, you know, it's easier to show on camera. So I'm just going to tell you what Smartphone Ink is about and give you an overview of a turn. And that should be sufficient for you to get a sense of the game's flavor. So, of course, as with many games, you're trying to get the most victory points, which are over here on this board. And you're going to do that by becoming the world's most dominant smartphone manufacturer and distributor. And so that is the goal of this game. And everything that you do in this game is directed towards producing and selling more cell phones in more places in the world, or in this case, just this region. You're going to play five rounds, and each of those rounds is divided into eight phases. So you can just track it right up here at the top of the board. And we're going to talk about what all these different things are. Additionally, we're going to put a couple of cubes here. I need to set the price for everyone. And there we go. All right, so the first phase in the game is planning. So if you are a human player, we'll talk about the AI in a moment, you're going to have these two paths and you're going to layer them in a way that shows as many things as you possibly can that you want to do. So these pads must be placed parallel or perpendicular to each other and you have to overlap at least one cell and you get to pick which sides and which things you want to show. There may also be things that you don't want to show. For example, if you're trying to control your price, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, you may want to block off price increase or decreases depending on what strategy you're trying to play. You're also going to get improvements throughout the game. And these improvements, uh, you start with one specific to your corporation. So I'm Atlantis, I'll get the Atlantis improvement. And these can be placed onto the pads and become part of the layering game, depending on how you want to build things up. So if you want to see a more detailed explanation of this, check out my tutorial for this game, which is also now live on YouTube. So after you plan, you're going to have a number of symbols showing that are going to affect the rest of your turn. And I'll go back to these and show you what they look like. So the next thing that you're going to do is adjust price up or down. So this red symbol is an increase in price. This symbol with the minus is, of course, a decrease in price. And everybody starts at a base price of five at the beginning of each round. So you are basically going to be deciding if you want to try to sell more expensive phones for potentially more victory points, but it's harder to place them. Or do you want to sell cheaper phones and so you get fewer victory points per good placed, but you do get first dibs on a lot of these spaces and it's easier to sell cheaper phones to some spaces on the board. So you're going to have to make decisions about the kind of strategy that you want based on your method of getting points and how many improvements you have and a number of other factors but essentially price up or price down. Then after that, you're gonna produce goods. All of these spaces that are black and have a box on them are goods production. So if you picked up these improvement tiles to produce more goods, that would be a way to get more phones out per round. So you're gonna produce as many goods as are showing in your plan. And then you're gonna come here for improvement. So everybody's pad has one improvement space. If this is showing in your business plan, then you get to choose a tile from this part of the board. And it goes in order of who has the cheapest phones. So if you want first dibs, you want to sell cheap. If this is covered, then you just get a generic goods tile and start producing extra good every turn. So you get some kind of improvement no matter what, but if you want to have symbols to play with, then you need this to show. After that, you have research. So these purple squares are the technology research symbol. And when you get to this phase, you pick up these little logistics pieces to symbolize how many technology points you've got to spend in a given round. And then you come down here to the purple part to spend them. So basically each of these is some sort of technological improvement that is going to let you sell to more spaces on the board because there are some phone sale spaces that are technology based. If you're the first person to get a patent, you get points at the end of the game. So there are points to be had for being the first person to make a certain improvement. And additionally, once you have made a certain improvement, you get a permanent bonus for the remainder of the game. One thing that's interesting about Smartphone Inc. is that the first person to get a technology pays one more logistics point for it. Then they take this tile and then everybody else doesn't get any victory points, but it does cost a point less for them to catch up and get that bonus. 
these pieces are also flippable, so you can have a couple of different bonuses uh, that you can try out as you play various permutations of the game. Then once you've done your technological research, you do logistics. So everybody has a starting region that they're already present in at the beginning of the game, but you can use logistics to expand your power to connected regions. So the more of these trucks that are showing on your pad for your plans, the more logistics points you're going to have to spend. So let's say that I had three logistics points showing and that this was my business plan. One, two, three. I'll get to take three of these points and decide where I want to spend them. So I can come here where there's a retailer. So I won't necessarily get to sell phones here, but I can get some points and get a bonus. Or I can come here, which is another area for me to make sales. I need two logistics points to expand to that area. So I'll put two points here. And then since they're there, I'll get to place an office building of mine. And then I can actually put the third point somewhere else and just kind of continue my expansion. Or I could come here. Basically, you just have to be connected to the area that you're trying to break into. And there are lines on the map to help you see. So spillover points can go into regions where you're not fully developed yet, but you can kind of get a head start for a future turn. That's also true down here for technology. So if you want to say save up for 4G, you don't have to generate all the points at once. You can put some points elsewhere, put some points here and leave them here for next round. It's cumulative as opposed to, I have to be able to generate it all this one massive time. So then once you've done your logistics turn, then you're gonna come over here to sales. So what this is basically gonna mean is that any of the phones that you produced back here in phase three are now eligible for sale. If you can't sell them, then you recycle them at the end of the turn. And what that means is that they're lost and oops, you don't want that necessarily. So for sales, let's say that I had a business plan. I'm giving you so many different business plans. You got to make one and stick to it for the round. <laughs> but let's say that I had three goods to sell like this. One, two, three. Then I would take these three cubes and on this part of the round, I get to choose where to put my goods. So where do I want to sell them? Well, I want to sell them in regions where I have presence. So Mexico and the West Coast. And I need to sell them at prices and with tech that's going to work. So right now, let's just say that my price is five and I don't have any tech. I'm actually really limited where I can sell these because my price at five, this, these red numbers are basically the maximum price that the seller is willing to pay. So if I drop my phone down to two, I could sell it here. If I dropped it down to four, I could sell it here. But if my price is five, I can't sell to either of, these, either of these spaces. They are, however, kind of a mixed bag space. So if I have this tech, I could sell that space regardless of price. So if I'd done some 4G innovation, I could put a phone here, even if my phone is more expensive because this person wants the tech that I'm selling, not just the cheap price. Here, I could absolutely sell two of my phones because at a price of five, I can sell to five and I can sell to six. But in order to sell my last phone, I would need to have tech that matches one of these symbols in order to offload it. So if I had Wi-Fi, 4G, any of those, I could sell it. But if I don't, this just disappears at the end of the turn and I'm kind of SOL. And then here in this final phase of the round, what we're gonna do is calculate all the points that we got from selling our phones. So if I sold these two phones and my price was five, I would get 10 points for just the phones. And then I would also get bonuses for regions where I'd sold phones and had the majority stake. So in this case, I would get an extra three points because I had presence in this region, I sold phones in this region, and I sold the most phones here. And then these bonuses get bigger as more people fill up and kind of compete for space. After that, you reset everything. So all of the goods come back. All of your buildings and things that you were saving up for stay. Everything goes back to the front. You set up for round two. These all refresh and you get new improvement tiles to put out. And then you're basically ready to go for another round. You also reset all prices back to five. So you can't lower your price one round and then keep lowering it round after round. It always goes back to that middle value of five. This is a solo channel. So there's also an AI that I'll tell you about really quick. So this is our buddy, Steve. Certainly no resemblance to anyone you've ever heard of. And Steve can basically play this round in a simplified way that makes them easy to run, but also gives you a run for your money. There's like a little separate rule book for Steve, which is very handy, but once you get the hang of it, this is pretty simple. So basically the way things work for Steve is that during planning, he doesn't have pads the way you do. He has 
he has a set pad of his own that starts with a bunch of production, a little bit of research, and a little bit of logistics. And then he'll have an improvement tile each turn. This is the one for his corporation, but he'll choose one each time. And this will bump up and he'll get a goods tile here. So basically within round one, Steve is producing like six goods. He does not play. In phase two, he's going to set prices just like you. So if this is his improvement tile and he's got this good here like he would, then Steve's price is going to go down to three. He automatically sells his phones a little bit cheap. During production, he's going to produce as many goods as show here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a lot of goods. Steve doesn't, Steve's brutal. Then in phase four, he's going to improve production. He'll always take the top improvement off of the improvement block. So if he's selling phones cheaper than you, he, and you wanted that top one, he will just take it. Sorry. During phase five, he will research technology. He'll allot all of his points in a way that's actually shown in the rule book. So there are little priority lists that'll help you determine where Steve's going to make his moves. This is also true for logistics and also for sales. So the rule book is going to help you determine where Steve is going to put stuff so you don't have to panic about where to put it yourself. Then you award Steve VP just like you would earn it. It's just that it's easier for him to earn it because he's got some advantages over you. But in fairness, it's also easier to outsmart him. And that's a quick overview of Smartphone Inc. with the solo mode. Now let's have some final thoughts. All right, and now for some final thoughts. Overall, I did like Smartphone Inc. quite a bit. I think that the gameplay was very smooth. I really actually liked the graphic design. I thought that the board wasn't the most attractive at first, but it really grew on me because everything was so clear. The images on the board were so clear. And there's just really a lot to be said for the streamlining that I saw visually um, on the board, in the pieces, on the pad. I actually ended up really liking the aesthetic of the game. And I also really like the smoothness of the gameplay. Each of the phases that you go through per round is very clear and it was very satisfying to just do everything in sequence and then see how it all worked out. This game is also brutally competitive, actually, especially at higher player counts as opposed to the solo mode. My first game of this was with five players and we were absolutely fighting it out over that map, trying to get phones sold and get a foothold in other markets. It was wild and I really, really liked it. On the solo end of things, I would say that it's more fun to play against humans because they are smarter and more deliberate about how they want to expand, territorially speaking. But Steve was a pretty good AI. He was very smooth to operate, and I really appreciated that Steve didn't take up a whole lot of my time, managed to put up a good threat to me because of his ability to spam phone production all the time. And the relatively low upkeep associated with this AI was also very appealing. I can absolutely see why, if you really like this game, this solo mode would be good. I personally really enjoyed it. Um, I think it is a very nice solo mode. And I don't have any serious complaints. I do have some quibbles about the rulebook. Uh, I thought that for a game that is as streamlined and simple and elegant as this one, there were points where the rules were kind of confusing. Like the, all the information that you need is generally there, but sometimes it's just not presented in ways that are as clean and streamlined and well thought out as the game board, as the symbols in the game were. And that's actually kind of disappointing. There will occasionally be questions that I have about a smaller kind of technicality in the game. And I'll take forever looking for the rule book, trying to locate it, even if I'm looking what seems to be like an obvious place. I also found that linguistically the rulebook was generally good, but it did that thing where it elides over a little bit too much, where there are just too many assumptions about whether the language is clear without going in and fully explaining everything that I might want to know. And so did I have any serious problems playing the game? No, but I did experience mild irritation as I was trying to make sure that I was doing certain things absolutely correctly. And so all that said, Smartphone Inc. is a very satisfying game. It was fun. I had a good time with it. However, I think where I feel a little bit conflicted is I'm really torn about whether I just like it a lot or whether I really, really like it. And I think that it's probably the former. So the game has nothing wrong with it in general gameplay. It's fun, it's light, it's quick, it's got some pretty good decisions, but it also just doesn't totally capture my heart and my interest the way that other light to midway euros have in the past. So this is one of those games that I would recommend that you get if you really, really, really like Euro games. 
Or if you have five players sometimes on game night and you want to be able to accommodate them, I really like this game at five and think it may actually have been best at five. So if this game is going to fill a need in your collection or in your game night, I can absolutely see why you'd have it and keep it. I would not turn down playing this game. If somebody said, hey Liz, do you want to play Smartphone Inc? I'd be like, yeah, sure, I'd love to play. You know, let's, let's go, it'll be fun. But at the same time, I'm not actually sure this game is going to stay in my collection. I've been working really hard to kind of cut down on just games that I'm not planning to play a lot or games that um, aren't really my absolute favorite games. And so Smartphone Inc. is definitely fun. It's definitely good game night material, but it's also not something where I'm going to say, you need to have this now. This is a cornerstone for any collection. Um, you could pry this out of my cold dead hands. I'm not having any of those feelings about this particular game. So if you like Euros, you're going to like this game. I'll be more than happy to see this hit the table at game night, but it's also not exactly one for the ages. And that's also totally fine. Most games are like that. So that's how I ended up feeling about Smartphone Inc. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, maybe become one of my patrons on Patreon. But most of all, happy gaming.